Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello, I'm Kerry L. Watt and welcome to the show. Now, I was reading recently in the Telegraph newspaper that apparently high sensitivity in people is a, is a really rare, um, rarely understood condition. And psychology today defines that high sensitivity as an acute physical, mental, emotional responses to both external and internal stimuli. So lots of different things that are happening in our world. Now, there's a leading researcher in this field who says apparently like 20% of us are born as high sensitive people. Now, my guest today has some fascinating insight into highly sensitive people. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. So please welcome Sue Sushnik to the show. Welcome, Sue. Hello, Gary. Hello. Hi. So let's quickly go back to that statistic that I just said about 20% of us being highly sensitive. Like to me, that seems like a huge number, but does that figure surprise you at all? It, it is a huge number when you think it's one in five people that you come across is very, very likely to be highly sensitive. Um, but what that stat doesn't cover is the fact that there are different levels of sensitivity within that. So some people are a bit more sensitive than other people. And some people are a lot more sensitive than other people. So when you drill down into the detail of what that statistic is actually on about, it, it gets a lot more interesting with the different levels of sensitivity in there. Mm. Now, I, I'm really fascinated in this. And I would absolutely say that I am definitely one of those people. After reading up on it, I was just like, yes, 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 yes. Wow. Um, so can you kind of, in your own words, describe to us perhaps it isn't something that um, people are aware of. In in your words, how would you describe what high sensitivity is? High sensitivity, so I'll, I'll say what it isn't. What it isn't, first of all, is um, overreacting to stuff and having super deeper emotions to everything, which is what people sometimes mistake it for. What it actually is, is that you just have a, a stronger or more in-depth or more in-detail response to what's going on around you and what's going on inside you. So your typical person might walk into a room and notice, you know, 10 things about that room. A highly sensitive person will go in and if they've got visual sensitivity, they'll see maybe 50 things that your typical person only sees 10 of those. So immediately you've got like a fivefold increase in how many stimuli are coming in just because you notice more stuff. The same for people who've got auditory sensitivity. They'll be the people who are really sharp um, musicians or really good at picking up on other people's accents and working out where people have come from. Because you, with high sensitivity, it's like you've got a much more sensitive meter in all of your senses. So that's how I would describe high sensitivity and, and a couple of ways that it, it manifests. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, honestly, I know I just said it, but I, I really do think it's fascinating. I think, um, I think it's like anything uh, when it comes to our personality if we kind of realize that there are other people and there are studies about it you know I mean just researching the field I can see you know tons of books and stuff about it and I'm like I never knew about this this is incredible and you had that sense of recognition when you saw it and you thought like oh that's me and what I find with a lot of highly sensitive people is they don't realize they're highly sensitive then they do exactly the process you're talking about. They read up on it, have a little look around on the internet, see what books there are, and then they start to recognise, oh, that's me, that's me, I do that as well. Talking yeah. to somebody last week, and um, I was explaining a bit about auditory sensitivity to her, and then she said, oh, is that why when I'm out and there's three conversations going on and there's music, I just can't concentrate on any of it? And yeah. Like, Yes, that's exactly what. So yeah. There's this sense of kind of coming home. People kind of go, oh, this explains how and why I do stuff. Okay, now I know what it is. Then I can handle it better. I can manage myself better because I know what I'm dealing with here. Exactly, and you, it's it's kind of like um, yeah, it's just being being aware of it. It kind of I guess when that feeling comes up, you can be like, okay, I know what this is. Like it, and it will hopefully pass, or you can manage it in that moment, can't you? That's it. That's it. Understanding and awareness just open so many doors. Open so many doors with sensitivity. It's fabulous. It really is. 
really is. And when I was reading up about it um, the other day, I read something about, you know, when you're on the train and you can hear someone's music blaring out of their earphones and like, <laughs> And, and I just thought, and, and and the thing was like, if, you know, if you're really bothered by this or like, and I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, I just thought it was me being really, I thought I was just a really awful, irritable person when I hear those kind of noises, you know, like if someone's playing a video or something in that kind of public environment, I literally with every half a second that goes through, I get really angry and I get really anxious. And I'm just like, what is going on? And as soon as I read that, I was like, Oh, okay. That's that's okay. I understand it now. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Your ears just do a lot more work than other people's ears, and so it, it bothers you more because there's more coming into them. It's like you've got. I'm not saying this about your ears in particular, but it's like you've got kind of bat ears, and um, they're just doing their thing, and other people just don't notice, and that we're just are really unaware that they're having such an effect on on. Oh, well, what is actually one in five in the population who's highly sensitive? Yeah, and uh, sounds and like I, you've had a revelation on this one. I know, I know. So obviously, I was so excited to talk to you today. Um, and what would you say is the biggest misconception or myth people have about highly sensitive people? Is it that they like, like you just said, with um, just thinking, oh, you know, they're just emotional, or you know, if you have an irrational fear of something, they just presume that that's high sensitivity yeah that's ex- that's exactly the one and partly it comes down to how we use our words because when we say somebody's a bit sensitive about that issue you know somebody's a bit sensitive about dogs or somebody's a bit sensitive about something then we usually mean they're a bit touchy on that subject it, it, it triggers them somehow and that's not what sen- high sensitivity in the way that we're talking about it today it's not what it's about it's about just the fact that you you notice more, you hear more, you see more, you smell more, um, you can taste more flavours. Honestly, the number of highly sensitive people you will find in a in a restaurant kitchen is pretty hard because you've got to have a good palate to, to prepare good food with a really good balance of flavours. And if you watch um, Chef's Table on Netflix, you'll see an enormous um, variety of different chefs. And you can really see that, well, if you're highly sensitive, perhaps <laughs> you need that in the first place. You can really see the sensitivity that they're showing towards their food in all the different ways, the smells, the textures, the flavours, what it looks like on the plate. It's just a, a different level of experiencing the world around you and your internal world as well. Yeah. Because um, let's be honest about it, if you're highly sensitive, you tend to have more intense emotions than someone who's not highly sensitive. So you tend to have a stronger response and you tend to have a more multifaceted response to something that's going on. So it won't be just that you're happy about something, but you may be happy with a tinge of sadness in there and maybe a bit of envy. And there's a whole mixture going on. And somebody else might just look at something and say, well, that's nice. And the highly sensitive person will be kind of like, well, that's nice. And, 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 and. So you have a much um, richer experience of the world than not highly sensitive people. Mm, I was reading that actually about children as well. So if there's a high, high sensitive um, child that, that they actually thrive in social situations because they can read emotions of other people and their peers around them. And I just thought that was incredible. It's fascinating, isn't it? It's fascinating. Yeah. And you get different types. So you do get children, as you're talking about, who really thrive on it. And then you get children who thrive for so long and then they need to go away and play quietly with their train set or they need to go and ride their bike up and down the playground to really process all the information and the input that they've had coming in from the other kids. Mm. So where what you were saying before about really understanding and recognizing yourself in there, when you see it in children and you understand and recognize what's going on for them, you can help them handle themselves and handle their emotions much more effectively. And then this, this goes through to adults. If, if, you, if you become aware that you're the kind of person who just thrives on social but then you need an hour or so to recharge afterwards, you can factor that into how you structure your diary and how you structure your week. So you make sure you get what you need so that you can be effective, bearing in mind your sensitivity needs that extra processing time. Mm. And what's, what led you to first go into this field, Sue? <laughs> Necessity. <laughs> <laughs> necessity um understanding myself I was a real puzzle to myself for a long time it's like, what, who, what the heck is going on was uh, a big question for a long time for me and then 
the more I got into it, the more I read, the more I observed, the more I communicated with other people about it, I started to realize that um, I had something to offer in there. So I had a, a, a multifaceted perspective to offer coming from a scientific background, but also very much like with my feet firmly planted in personal development and, and um, psychology and so on. It, um, it all came together into like how to understand people who are not just highly sensitive, but also highly intelligent and high, multifaceted in the sense of they've got a musical side, they've got a theatrical side, they've got a real appreciation for literature and song and poetry, they've got a scientific side, they've got a spiritual side, things like that. So that, that's, that's what led me into it. And I discovered I had a bit of a knack for helping people to understand themselves. And um, that led me, led me deeper and deeper because I, I love a good puzzle. <laughs> so people became... <laughs> became I was a puzzle to myself and then I realized I could puzzle other people out as well and um it, it just went from there really what led you to actually creating your own practice in it as well I guess is that is that the only opportunity to work within the field maybe is to set up on your own um I, I wouldn't I'm not sure that it's the only to do that but what led me into it was um, discovering I had a knack for it and it just wouldn't leave me alone. You know, I kept having people coming to me and we would have discussions and we would talk about sensitivity and they would go away understanding themselves better and having more insight and perspective on what was going on for themselves and how to handle it. And this just kept happening and kept happening and I tried doing other jobs and things, but I kept coming back to this and eventually I went, okay, I'll, I'll do this then. It, it seems to be asking me to do it, so I will, I will get off and... Uh, get on my way rather and and get on with it and we kind of touched on um a moment ago about the literature or or books or information that there there is out there but would you say there is sufficient advice or even therapies or or anything that we might need to read up on or take action is that accessible to everyone oh that's a lovely huge question um i think that there are a lot of advice out there and um a lot of it is People have their own take on it. So different people will focus on different aspects of, of how to do things. So it's really a question of putting together the, the jigsaw pieces that fit you as an individual. So um, you might need to do a bit of scoping to do that or see somebody who is a specialist who can, who's already done that scoping and can point you on, in the right direction. When it comes to things like therapies, Highly sensitive people can respond differently in therapy to non-highly sensitive people. And this is beginning to be recognized in things like cognitive behavioral therapy, that highly sensitive people just respond to it differently because things are happening at a deeper level. So you can't just deal with what's happening at the surface level. Um, When you're you're working with a highly sensitive person, you have to go to to what's in the depth and and the full texture and richness of the highly sensitive person's experience um, and whether that's accessible to everyone I know best the the English speaking the English uh, literature if you're in a different language and that, that's, a, that's a different kettle of fish entirely um, I say that as somebody who lives in Holland so I'm kind of immersed in the, the sort of two languages most of the time is there enough advice out there yes if you know what you're looking for know if you want it to already be bespoke to you um so i think there's there's plenty of there's plenty to be done and i'm not i'm not so sure that everybody that needs to be aware of it is aware of it i'm talking here about medical profession and, and psychologists it's becoming much better known but it's not necessarily um common knowledge let's say and how how does um, some form of coaching or one to one support help help high sen- uh, highly sensitive people? In the first instance, it helps people to understand what's going on, and it helps them make sense um, actually of their whole life. Because once you realise you're highly sensitive, and you begin to understand what that actually means for you with your sensitivities. You then look back at your childhood and you look back at your relationships with your friends and your parents and your brothers and sisters and you look back at experiences you've had and you kind of go, oh, I see why that happened now. I see what was going on. So you you have a kind of reckoning in a way of, of understanding yourself from a different perspective and that can lead to a lot of confidence because suddenly you, you, you have 
an understanding and an explanation for, for a lot of your life. And then going forward, you um, when you go through through coaching or some help from a, a highly sensitive person specialist, you then have tools and strategies for managing your life. Like we were talking before about with children and with parenting, mm. you, you've got a highly sensitive child. Then if you're a highly sensitive parent as well, you need strategies that are not just your standard parenting strategies to help your highly sensitive child and to make sure that you as a parent get what you need as a highly sensitive person as well. So it gives you um, it gives you knowledge, it gives you skills, and it gives you um, an accurate and sort of an accurate way of looking at things. So you you just know what's going on and you can handle it better. And and then from that come all the other things: confidence, peace of mind, better quality of life because you're not stressed out or completely knackered all the time, which are quite frankly all too common amongst highly sensitive people. Yeah, and I love that what you said about, um, you know, understanding it for yourself and if you have children um, that are highly sensitive as well. I mean, I, I, I have a four year old son and I obviously after reading up on it myself and something about children popped up and there was a question, you know, is your child highly sensitive? And I was like, oh, you know, I'll do this fun little quiz. And, oh, my goodness. Like he scored quite high on this little quiz. And I was like oh my goodness, like this just makes sense now, you know, and, and there was lots of advice in there that said, you know, we shouldn't, um, you know, if, uh, uh, you know, there's lots of negative um, messages, isn't there, around when a child is crying and we say, I mean, I don't personally say it, but like, you know, oh, don't be silly, don't do that and mm-hmm. uh, that kind of thing. And, and, and that can kind of give them those negative messages that showing emotion and having feelings are not strong or they're not you know not what we need to do and I just I just thought yeah just even that initial reading up on that I just because I just I just always like in my head I just call him like my fragile little flower you Mm. know thinking oh he is quite sensitive and that was a sensitive little soul and I was like well actually (laughs) that is actually true and it just kind of makes sense um so I guess even just I I don't know from your opinion but for me, just an initial bit of reading is really helpful. And I guess if anyone wants to do that, and then they can dive further, can't they? Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the, it's that thing of um, kick the log and the river will flow. And once you start to, um, once you've got a label for it, you can, you know what to Google then. It's really quite practical. And then you can find things out. And like you say, you can, you can really understand your child. And not only that, but you can also make your child you can help them to feel okay that they are the way they are. And for so many sensitive people, you you go through a lot of your life, and this has been my experience as well, thinking that there is something fundamentally wrong with you. Yes. You're not doing what people expect you to do. You're not reacting in the way that people expect you to do. And you're having bigger emotions. And when you think about like a pint-sized child, having like gallon sized emotions yeah you need to, that needs a different kind of handling from a pint-sized child having pint sized emotions so when you have that understanding you can you can help him to understand that he is okay exactly as he is mm. and not only that but sensitive people have so much to offer the world and this is this is really sort of um where my heart is is that I I believe so strongly that sensitive people have so much to offer the world and we kind of get stuck behind um, being embarrassed about being sensitive, being ashamed of it, being put down for it and getting stressed out because we're not handling ourselves in the way we need to be. And to use a a car kind of um, metaphor here, it's like, you know, I'm not putting non-highly sensitive people down, so don't, don't take it in this way. Um, but it's like most people are kind of mini metros you know they're great for running around town putting your shopping in doing your errands that sort of thing highly sensitive people are more like performance cars they need a different kind of driving style they need a different kind of driving lesson and if you try to drive a high performance car like a mini metro it's not going to work you're going to be stalling at the traffic lights and you know sort of kangarooing your way around it just just doesn't happen we need specialist garage Yes, I think exactly so. You need a specialist garage. <laughs> so, 
So, um, and that's not to say that, that there's not any value because there's, there's so much value in having different kind of cars on the road. They're for different sort of purposes. And highly sensitive people bring such um, strengths and qualities into the world that quite frankly, we need more of at the moment. So whatever I can do to help highly sensitive people really you know, grasp their qualities, grasp their strengths and make them, them better and really serve the world, just like, hallelujah, that's where I want to be. Yeah, it's just absolutely incredible. I, I, I love this topic so much. Is there, um, is there anything that you feel is really important for people to know um, that, that we haven't covered yet today? Oh, let me uh, think what's important for people to know. Um, if, if this sounds at all anything a little bit like you, um, the people listening, if this sounds a little bit like you, look it up and just spend an hour just pootling your way around the web and look it up and see if it fits. And, um, and just know that there are people like you out there as well. Mm. A lot of people. Mm. A lot of people and going back to what I mentioned at the beginning that there are different levels of sensitivity you get some people who are like a bit more sensitive than than the average I had a lovely locksmith come around recently and he was really sensitive and he was really tuned in to the different emotional states and the different way people needed to communicate to be communicated with so the way he engaged with me very different to how he engaged with my father-in-law who was here at the time helping us um, decorate the house and it was just pure sensitivity in action. It was beautiful. A different kind of sensitivity to what I have. Yeah, and, and that's such a skill, isn't it? It's amazing. It's amazing. And when you think about a locksmith going into vulnerable situations and, you know, say somebody's had a break in, mm. if he can have that sensitivity with his customers while he's fixing their locks and stuff, that brings them so much reassurance and emotional connection and him just being there responding to them in that beautiful way that he did with me and my father-in-law it's just and that's an amazing quality to have an amazing quality to have mm, so, it is yeah uh, you can take that that part of your character into your job or into your business or you know your family just to everything can't you yeah it's a real asset it's a real asset when, when you when you know what it is and when you've kind of mastered it in the way that this locksmith obviously had um, and I don't think he even had tried to master it. It had very fortunately for him come, come naturally. But when you really master your high sensitivity as an asset, I mean, it, you can really blow socks off people in a good way. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing all of this and being here today. It's just, it's just fascinating. I know I keep saying that, but I just think it's an absolutely incredible topic. Um, so how can someone that wants to find out more hear about Sue Sushnik and how you can help them? So you can find me on the internet. You can find me at susushnik.com, which is S-U-E. It's my first name and my surname is S-U-S-N-I-K, susushnik.com. Um, I fall over it myself sometimes. And uh, you can find me on my, on my website. You can find me on LinkedIn as well. And I work uh, one-to-one with people, both online and on location in The Hague in the Netherlands. And uh, I'm also available for companies if this is the kind of thing, if you, if you know you've got some staff who need some help with their sensitivity or you can see that you've got some sensitive staff and they're just not handling it very well or very elegantly, um, get in touch with me, give me a call. I'd be like, delighted to talk with you and see what we can do. Mm. And I have to say, I've, I've known Sue for, for a little while and have actually had a session with her and I follow her online and I would definitely say um, to to follow her or to check out her uh, her services because it is, yeah, you definitely, definitely know your stuff, Sue. <laughs> Very kind of you, Terry. Thank you. Very kind. No, pl- no problem. Thank you so much, Sue. Thanks for being here today with us. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.